Hello, my name is Monica Riccioli, and I am a member of the Oracle WebLogic product management team. Today, I want to briefly cover the WebLogic Server 1213 JTMU feature, no XA transaction T log write, and I want to do a demo for you. How does it work? A user will configure a determiner resource and will choose that resource which is most reliable. They want to configure the least number of determiners, otherwise it would be bad for performance. Mm -hmm. Determiners can be either JDBC data sources or WLS JMS resources. The determiner resource decides the outcome of the pending transaction at recovery time, whether the transaction will be committed or rollback. A determiner resource must be an XA resource because we rely on the two-phase commit protocol to decide the outcome of a recovery. Determiner resources prepares and commits last in the global transaction. If more than one resource has been configured to be a determiner and more than one resource is enlisted in a global transaction, then the first one to enlist is nominated as the determiner of that global transaction. Let me walk you through, through the two-phase commit that we do when we have a determiner configured. In 12.13, we still write resource and server checkpoints to the T-log store, and this is because we need them to determine what resources to call at, say, recover on. These checkpoints are written and purged very sporadically. Only the first time they're used within a global transaction, and they will not be purged until they become unavailable. Even though we are still, we still have a resource server checkpoint right to the store, we're still perceiving performance optimizations by not writing the transaction checkpoints to the T-log. When the transaction has reached the two-phase commit, the transaction manager will call prepare on all resources that are not determiners, and it can do so in parallel. Only after all resources have finished their prepare will the prepare be called on a determiner resource. Then commit will be called on all resources which are not determiners, and then the determiner will be committed last. No transaction record was written to the T-log nor was there a need to clean the transaction record from the T-log after the transaction has been completed. Recovery with determiner resources. The first thing that happens is once the WebLogic server has come up and recovery starts, the transaction manager will read from the T-log the resource and server checkpoints. This tells it what resources it needs to call at say recover on. It will call XA Recover on resource that is a determiner, and then it will call XA Recover on resources that are not determiners. The return from an XA Recover call is a list of pending transactions on that resource manager. At this point, the transaction manager will look into the transaction ID of each pending transaction. In the branch qualifier of the transaction, there is a bit that indicates what resource is the determiner for that particular transaction. At that point, it will make a comparison if the transaction is pending on the determiner resource as well as in all resources. That means that prepare has succeeded in every single resource and the transaction will be recovered with a commit. If the transaction is pending on some of the resources, and it's not pending on the determiner, then the recovery will be a rollback. The logic behind it is that if the transaction is not pending on the determiner resource, that means the prepare has not been called on that resource yet. Remember that the determiner will be the last one to be prepared in the global transaction. So the recovery outcome of that transaction will be a rollback. Commit a rollback is called on all resources that are not determiners and it's called on the determiner last. The transaction manager did not have to either read any of the transactions from the transaction log, nor did they have to clean them once those transactions were complete. That's what gives this feature is optimization. I will now go through the demo. I'll show you the basic configuration needed to enable this feature. First, I have under data sources, I have three data sources, and the data sources are XA data sources. Under the data source, I will choose DS3 to be my determiner resource. So in my domain, under the JTA tab, you can see that I have configured here my determiner. 
The configuration consists of the name of the data source, underscore, the name of my domain. I have written a very simple client, and let me walk you through work it does. So I have connections to two data sources, DS3 and DS2. First, I start my global transaction, and I get the connection, do inserts to DS3, do inserts to DS2, and then simply connect. So now let's run my client. Let me start my client. Commit is done. I will walk you through the server log, trying to check to see if your transaction has been written or not written to the T log when using the determiner. Here we can see that uh, S3, which is a determiner, is getting enlisted in the global transaction and DS2. So this is a two-phase transaction. The next command of interest would be the prepare. The non-determiner resources will always get prepared before the determiner and the determiner last. Uh, DS2 is getting prepared before the DS3, which is a determiner. If you look at this log statement, you can see that it states that uh, log write is not necessary as a determiner set. So this is a statement that will tell you that your transaction did not get written to the T log. The next command of interest would be the commit. Here, commit is being called on the non-determiner resource first and the determiner last. Now I will change my client so that the transaction remains pending and I can then show you that it doesn't get written to the T log even though it becomes pending after the transaction has been prepared. So through instrumentation, I will kill the coordinating server before it has a chance to call commit on the determiner. Let's look at our X ID. So it's of this format, uh, 000A82BD886. We will look at the T log to see if the entry is in the T log, if that transaction got written to the T log. As you can see here, the only, the only checkpoints are resource checkpoints. There is no transaction checkpoint. And if we check in the database that the transaction that we just started has remained pending, so that would be the first entry in the DBA to PC pending tables. Let's run the server, the WebLogic server again, so that recovery gets called. Let's get our XID so that we can look in the logs. So if you look at these two entries, you can see here that recovery is being called on the determiner resource, and then that transaction that we left pending has been committed. If we go back to our database and we do a select again on the DBA to PC pending table, that record has disappeared, so the transaction has been recovered successfully. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much.